Shalom, y'all. Islam, Shalom Alaikum, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, Masallah. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Hope everybody is well. God bless. Blessings to everybody that come through. Appreciate y'all coming through. As always, thank you for investing your time in the channel. Hope y'all get information that y'all actually use. Um, hopefully it's stuff that you haven't seen or and not just because I'm giving it to you so you actually can use this shit. You know what I'm saying? I hope I hope coming here is not like uh, I heard somebody say watering watering dead plants, right? So if you come in here just to water and you're not getting anything in return, then I'm a dead plant. So hopefully the information that you get here, you can use or at least to repel. So like myself, y'all see me out. Um, I'm actively where the police, um, not where the police are, but if I get pulled over, you know that I'm going to stand up to the driver's license thing, um, the taxes, all these things that I stand in, right? And I don't charge y'all coming here with the people that's enthusiastic about the channel. You come here, you might ne not necessarily uh, put it in action, put it in effect right now, but you hear. And if push ever came to shove, it's a way out for you. Like, I'm not telling everybody to go out and um, be the asshole that I am, be the loud mouth that I am. Not y'all, not y'all per se, but people that's pretending that they represent um, the people's best interest. This is a straight up challenge to them. And it don't matter what color they are, which race they banging for, religion, any anything like that. My foundation is, which most of y'all know, is, is the word as God gave it to us, not to the left, not to the right. And what people don't understand, and and you know why it's easier to deal with atheists in this time than it's ever been, is because of the rights that you have. And most mankind on the planet will say at the drop of a hat, you have God-given rights, and they're correct. But that's the extent of it. They never invest into what God is, what God said, or how how is it by God that you have those rights? And it's this simple. He made all of us equal. And we got to go with that. To not believe in God is to say somebody can make a statement. Somebody can make a rule or law just because they felt like it. And it's no check mechanism. You understand what I'm saying? So the United States of America was governed on the premise of God creating everybody equal. That's one nation under God. Now, what happened in the midterm in between, it's a bunch of skirmishes, wars. Um, the world itself is created by people. The names of different land masses and all of that, those are names that's given by those same people. But behavior of man is, is the behavior of man. I don't care what language you speak. Somebody will be a murderer. Somebody will be a raper. Somebody will be a, a prostitute so forth and so on. And if you don't have one thing down the middle of the street, the world would be for those who had the most money, who had the most say, the most the, the most voices. You would kind of have to be a slave to what the world said, right? Y'all understand that. Through God, we autonomous. Y'all understand like it's judgment on us. It'll be at the hands of of our God, but not like you think not like how man brings vengeance that's almost automatic, but crazy enough, the revenge against you or me, it'll be brought by the hand of you or me. Our creator, through the scripts, you see the narrative, it's no face, it's no voice, it's us. We agents of him. So when I bring the divinity of the creator, then I could be a blessing to anybody that I'm around. But if I'm out of line with the creator, I could be that curse. You know, so People don't get involved with the book from the base. What God is, is rights. What God is, is law and order. There's no other law on the planet besides that of God. And once you start investing in that, now you're talking about contractual work. Again, God, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> God made all of us autonomous. You know, not old in anything when you come into the world. If you could, for the life of you, just hold on to that point and let that seed grow from there. Because being born from God, the creator, is no debt. 
You know, whatever debt you have is what your mom and your dad uh, brought you into this world on, which is another thing that a defense mechanism against this white supremacy and um, being born into poverty, not having a chance, not having any jobs. Those situations existed before you was here, before I was here. You know, these situations have been going on since the 60s and they still here and what, 2022. Now, when does the part, uh, I'm in poverty, I can't afford to have this baby right now supposed to play out. That's just another thought process. But um, we can't snatch our heads out of some things being that's just the way it is. And nothing is just the way it is. Things are the way you allow them. Now, what I owe all of y'all is what God say I owe him. You know, when I keep God's law, that protects you and other people like you from me. Um, don't murder. That don't suit me. You know, I'm not going to murder myself. That suits you. You not murdering suit me. You know, like that's the representative of God. That's his word. That's his character. So now I'm carrying out not murdering and you carrying out not murdering. You don't have to look for a thunder god, a police, anybody else. God is governing us right there in the flesh with, with your ability. It depends on your ability to keep what God's word is. What, what people don't understand when they give up God's word is to it's for gain. Everybody will give up their rights. This is contract, you and nothing's wrong with a contract. You have a right to contract yourself out as an autonomous being that God made. Now, you don't contract out in group contracts, right? Um, even so, in jobs, they have a range that they hire people from. You don't get hired out at the same thing everybody else get. You, you do experience, do other things that it's an autonomous contract. Now, let me... Tell y'all about contracts because it's the word, <clears throat> excuse me, it's the word of God. That's the law. That's the absolute law of the land. And that entails robbing, killing, stealing, uh, prostitution, rape, bearing false witness, well, which is lying, especially in a court of law situation. These are the laws of God. That's it. That's pretty much it. You know, um, you can own property. You can travel, you can build houses. All these things are protected. Um, that's called life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness in the Constitution. And it's important that if you don't know the Constitution, that the people that you put in office, the people that you vote for, understand that the Constitution is basically foundationally you keeping the rights that God gave you, not you having to give up anything. You know, um... I speak about taxes, taxes called taxes. It's a contract. It's saying, well, I agree to give up X amount of dollars during this period of time because on the back end, I get what you some things are supposed to come with your tax dollars. Right. If you if you agree into that contract, me, I don't agree with the tax contract. I just stand on what God said. And that's the autonomy that that God created all of us and just as sure as somebody can come up with the idea that they want you to pay taxes you can come up with the idea to say no I'm not going to pay taxes and for you to go to jail for you to be arrested subjugated to this other man because that's just what he feels that's slavery you don't owe a commitment to a state you know the state is under God God is not under the state but you off to the races when you're born because your mom, your grandma, your dad, everybody before you agreed. But everybody before you didn't, didn't question. And now, and even before then, the time wasn't right to where you can see how much for the public the government is not. The situation we are now, how fucked up it is, is perfect for your vision. Um... When we talk about drugs, we talk about COVID, we talk about what's right for the public. Well, I'm the public. You the public. People like us are the public. Now, my portion of the public say I'm not taking vaccinations. It's not good for me. And I'm the proof. You know, um, I'm proof enough because it's my body. Now, this is what your government see. They're for the public. But I'm the part of the public that don't agree with their money agenda. So... 
my part of the public don't have a mouth to speak on. We've seen recently with Joe Rogan um, in a clip of one of these doctors that actually had invented some of this shit. He was like, well, let me let me pull it up. Matter of fact, so I don't get it wrong. Who are doing How y'all doing today, though? Hope everybody is well. And, and again, appreciate everybody for coming through. So here we go. Um, Robert Malone, inventor of the mRNA vaccine tech, banned by Twitter for exposing risk of COVID-19 vaccines. So now he could be 100% wrong about what he's saying. You know, he could be 100% right about what he's saying. But you, as the public, you don't even get the the chance to see what he's saying because Twitter, they know better than me and you as the public. And they're supposed to be a tool of the public. But now they're becoming a voice in the face of the public because they've said it. I've had a couple posts taken down because I disagree with, with a gang of them or a group of them that pretty much that has finances at the core of everything they talk about for their rationale. And me is just basically one person and and my wellness, you know, um, I've been here a long time. I've been here since the, um, the sixties, right? Anybody that's over 50 right now, you remember a time when, um, they recalled Tylenol cause they thought it was laced with cyanide. Well, I believe it was some people had died. That was the rumor. And they recalled. All the Tylenol because of that, that a couple people had, had spoken about the Tylenol and they took it off the shelves. I remember, and if I'm not mistaken, I don't, I don't want to say this and cause I hate when people say what I'm about to say. One of my cousins, she actually passed at that time and the family, the rumor was that it was from the Tylenol that she was taking. And this is when I was probably in my early, late teens, early 20s. It was a recall. I don't know if the CDC was around then or not, but I know it's been times that automobiles been recalled because people report certain shit, right? So we in a time where it's a parent that might post that their child died from a heart attack after these vaccinations. And it's plenty of, of information of people like me like you, the public, uh, people, from my point of view, I'm not getting vaccinated per God, per the scripts of God. God, the, the holy creator speaks against the snake oil. You know, he speaks against the abomination of using medicine. He calls it sorcery. And if anybody that's Christian, which is a totally bullshit book, they even got the gist in there because they can't tell complete lies and have you follow it. It would be too easy to detect, like, what's happening now. That's why the timing is perfect, right? But the creator called the uses of the administration of drugs, sorcery. In your Christian novel manual, I believe that's um, Revelations 18 and 23, if I'm not mistaken. And then when you get to it and you look at the word sorceries, go to your strong concordance, look up that verse, click on it and see what it's telling you that the creator, our God says sorcery is. And then this is one nation under God where they push sorcery. They don't push health. They don't push what I push eating and not, not some stupid diet, just daily. The same way you take those pills that you hate, you prescribe your mental, your, that spell that you under. My grandmother was under it, but she wasn't under the kind of spell that would give her the energy to incorporate herbs, spices, and things like that for your blood flow, all of these things. This is something that's been ripped and raped from you from the from the jump because you come into this game with a mind state that you got to grab as much money as you can in America to be successful. Um, on the money here in America, it says, in God we trust. That's the most disgusting shit that people don't even pick up. Now that I'm keeping Torah Islam, I have to question you. And I want y'all to look me right in my face when you answer the question, all right? To anybody that's out there. What does Allah have to do with money or finances? Where'd um, 
he tell us that we needed to be rich. We needed to have all the money in the world and we wouldn't be successful or looked upon favorably unless we had all these. Or the commandment to say thou shall be a millionaire, billionaire, and please just don't overcomplicate it. Just take it as simple as I mean it. This is how you'll learn what the word of God is. It's not there. So somewhere, somebody planted an all out here is the way to be godly is to do what the state says. You have to check in with the state. The state is your government. They set the parameters for all of it. Um, and unrightly so. And I'm vocal. I'm loud. I don't mind the confrontation because y'all have to see the confrontation. And it's, it's sort of the sacrificial lamb, so to speak, but, but, but not like that because, well, let's say the sacrificial goat because lamb's going to be slaughtered, but it ain't no slaughtering the goat, the ram. I came to butt his, so it ain't really a sacrifice. It's a willing rumble, you know what I mean? But in that rumble, y'all get to see the kind of footing that I have in it, so you know that this shit is not what they say. Now, you might not be in the shape, the condition that I, I'm in to push this war, but you're not supposed to. Everybody that's in control or that's supposed to be in this one nation under God is supposed to have the nation of God first. All the rules and regulation of God first. That's it. The laws of God first, but you live in a land where the negotiating part comes first, the business comes first, and they tell him you got to be a part of the business in order to be a human being. The numbers know, the policy know, and it's easy to get pulled up in the, yeah, the machines, the policy, but y'all say this, atheists, this is your main attack point with God. Oh, man wrote the book, the Bible. Yeah, man wrote, don't murder don't rape, don't rob, those things is easily ignored. But man wrote, you owe him money, you got to have a driver's license, uh, you got to pay taxes, all this stuff man wrote that you can agree upon and there's nothing morally sound about any of that shit. You couldn't prove any of that shit by God's word, but you gravitate towards man. So you kind of choose the slavery. And then if you're going to have people that represent you, they need to be people that represent per God. This is what the judges in the book was about, but people not intimate with it. They want they want this detached story so y'all can go to church and pretend. The word of God is not pretend. I liken the word of God to to well let me let me again what I do day to day, daily, and it's snowing outside and I do not fucking feel like it today, but I will be outside today doing my pull ups, push ups, and dips. It's not even about whether I want to do it or not. It's my life. It's like getting up and going to work. Y'all get up and go to work in the snow because you know physically you get money from it. I get up and get on those bars and do my thing because physically I get money for it. And I keep the word of God because physically I get money for it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know how the money come. You think it's actually in God we trust. That's your God you trust that you waving. Minds don't have a form. Minds don't have a face. It's an order. And it's a healthiness. And, and it's what's around me. I radiate God. You, you dig it? You're not going to draw a picture of a man with a beard, with a robe that's flowing. We have an order for not creating any images. He said, be careful. When you heard my voice from the fire, all you heard was a voice. Be careful. Don't make one of those for yourself. No graven images whatsoever from that. If y'all brave enough, if you really want to serve God and not the state, not a Muslim state, not a Christian state, you can stand on that. You don't have to battle Christians or Muslims like I do. But the Kaaba stone is a graven image. Any man of God that's convicted wouldn't even be that close to a graven image. They were error on the side of God. Me, I'm saying, fuck that Kaaba stone. Straight up. So the Most High gonna know my balls and dick swinging in his favor. You dig it? He gave them to me, created me in his image, and goddamn if I ain't gonna stand up. And his image is what? Be careful, because when you heard my voice from the fire, you saw no image. So what is the image of the creator? What is it? It's not this COVID-19 shit. I'm actually 
One of the images of the creator is pestilence. One of his images is murder. One of his images is rape, robbery, all these things. But the image, those images come when you don't keep what he tell you to do on this side. The creator's will going to be done from blessings to murder. And it's going to come at the hands of me and you. Your ability to keep or not keep it. That's the image of God. We was created in his image, the light, the darkness, the good, the evil. I keep reiterating it because the world keep reiterating that be God. So as much as the world show up on this God shit, I show up on the creator shit. And once you have a creator versus some God shit, it's different. It was plenty different gods, but it was one creator. So you can talk about you the God of basketball, but you going to die. God of basketball, the God of football, you going to die. God of the Constitution, they all dead. God of Torah, Moses, dead in the ground. The creator that made him, that gave him the instinct or whatever it was to write that shit down, still here. I'm here. The world's still here. And it's amazing that people try to clock, clock the Lord, try to figure out the creator. You the creations. It's nothing to figure out. It's just order to follow or, or not follow. But his hand going to ring true with blessing, curse, disease, or prosperity. It's been shown to you in the different stories throughout. And as far as the people that call themselves black, again, I was born in the 60s. I've seen nothing but repeat black people saying the same shit from 77, 87, 97, 2007, 2017, what, when do you change and what is it that you do change? Like you've been chasing blackness, actually caught it, haven't been able to use it to your benefit and you still watering the black plant. Nothing's grew out of it yet, right? The, the rebellion in black against America is what keep them slaves to the United States, the government. Without God in the mix, it's race in the mix. And with race is favoritism this way or that way. And this isn't a, um, this isn't by chance. This is a design. And if people had the time, regular people, which y'all don't, you have to go out, be moms, dads, grandmoms, employees here I, I understand that i understand that's why fully i come every day for anybody that's open to the information and mind you it's no pay for this this is the work of god any man governing body elder magistrate official has to officiate using the word of god like you can't be tapped into the state because there's money to be gained there so king solomon all the riches that he had led to him having his contract, the 666 contract. The mark of the beast was just as a, an agreement with another nation. And it happened annually. The people that control the media today, they controlled the media back then. So they did a little slide of hand and said the three sixes was the mark of the beast. And you should find this mark in your hand and in your forehead. That's what they said. I remember this from Damien, an omen, scared to death as a little boy. Uh, one of the parents got the gist that this was the devil, the coming of the Antichrist, looked in his head and saw the three sixes there. This is Evan. This isn't parochial school. This isn't rabbinical school. This is me. This is y'all. People, person to person. My research out of these books, I'm going to First King. Y'all mind going with me? First Kings 10, and I believe it's 14. All right. The weight of the gold which Solomon received every year was 666 talents of gold. He got this from the Queen of Sheba, a nation that's not supposed to practice what the Israelites practice. The word of God, Torah, monotheism. All right. Uh, that's what. First mm, Kings. 10 and 14. So I'm doing math right now. First Kings 10 and 14 equals to X. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do some algebra. Uh, let me go to Isaiah because Isaiah coupled with that should give you some kind of understanding. But 
You can't do this just like I'm doing it. What, what's required is you reading all of it. You're going through it, skimming, looking, however you need to get the gist of what you're reading. And then you should be able to connect it. And one thing about this book is this simultaneously going on in a bunch of different places. And these, these people that speak and should be passing off this message to the next generation. And I think so many times... On purpose, they made it religious and they didn't make it a story from which you could grab lessons from. So I'm headed in Isaiah now, y'all. Um, I believe it's Isaiah, was it Deuteronomy 6? Might be Deuteronomy 6, forgive me, y'all. But um, all these verses be spinning in my dome. Deuteronomy 6. All right, here we go. This is Deuteronomy 6. I'll start at the, the beginning of that. They give some context. Now, the way they talk, anybody that follow me, y'all know I'm not too keen on saying the words word for word, but the context has to remain. Now, before I start this, um, I like breaking shit down because that's the way to understand it. It's, it's doors, it's rooms and rooms. It's, it's a door in here. This is a room. That's another room in there. So sometimes you got to go in a smaller room to understand the bigger room. Now, the instructions, the instructions, God damn, y'all, I just forgot where I was at. Um, at this is instructions, the laws, the rules that the Lord your God has commanded me to impart upon you in the land that you're about to cross into and occupy. This is Deuteronomy 6. I'll just start maybe the other point to come back to me. When you try to bring it back up, you never catch it so. And this is the instructions, the laws, the rules that the Lord, your God, has commanded me to impart to you to be observed in that land you're about to cross and to occupy. So that you, your children, and your children's children, you, your children's, and your children's children may revere the Lord, your God, and follow as long as you live all his laws, commandments that I enjoin upon you. That you may, that you, that, excuse me, help, enjoin upon you to the end that you may long endure. No heaven here, right? Just say long endure. Take that in because they preach a heaven in Christianity. It's minor stuff when I say it's checkers. It's, this is how it is. Obey, O Israel, willingly, faithfully, that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly. In a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of your father spoke to you. Not a literal milk and honey. Um, fertile land, fertile soil for their produce, their animals, so forth. Hail Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. That's um, Deuteronomy 6 and 5 I'm at now, 6 and 6. Take the heart. These instructions which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home, when you are away, when you lie down, when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them serve as a symbol in your forehead. Sound familiar? Mark of the Beast. Um, Deuteronomy 6 and 8. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. This is the math. Deuteronomy 6 and 8 equal Y. 1 Kings 10 and 14 is the who and what. The weight of the gold which Solomon received every year was 666 talents of gold. Besides what came from tradesmen, from the traffic of the merchants, and from all the kings of Arabia and the governments of the region. It's a deal with other nations. It's a deal with governments outside the word of God. All of y'all that took that vaccination, that's a deal with a Christian nation. The creator speaks against using drugs. That's a mark of the beast. You openly took the mark of the beast. You show up in church every Sunday Talking about a beast. You the fucking beast. There's no animal running around here with claws like the make-believe shit that y'all see in this New Testament. You the fucking animal. 
You the beast, you the dragon, you all this shit, and you that because you can't simply keep the word of God. But it's not new. It's always been going on. And they've always lied. And we've always not read the story. You always have somebody else read the story to you. I read the story. I tell a story with me, you, the people in mind. Y'all reject that shit. I'm telling you the rights that we have per God. You know, put the mo or used to put the most pressure on me about the actual laws. It'd be people like me trying to stump me with shit you have no idea about. I'm like looking at y'all like you fucking fools. Shout out to OGP, one of my OGs. He hit me up with something today. And I'm going to talk about that as well. Like, I have to inject that now because timing is important. It's never been another time where we had so many eyes. And we had the government itself show it to you. But since you're not based in the word of God, you're based in Christianity which is policy by itself, you have no idea. OGP sent me a, a clip of somebody, and I guess they was uh, going into common law, right? So shout out to OGP. He sent me the clip, and the guy was talking about, uh, I'm, I'll play a little bit of it. And in the background, he got a form from the government, no doubt, so. Let me share. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick summary on how to do a common law copyright. You're going to go to whatyoucanknow.com. You do not have to use whatyoucanknow.com. I use it because all the documents on there are legit, and everything has already been put on public record, and I ain't had no issues with it. And you can find it online, whether you Google it, DuckDuckGo, whatever. Go right ahead and do it. Get the common law copyright. Make sure that it says this is a phrase. Or a literary work. Don't say your name because you cannot copyright a governmental work. Form with that your parents gave you, that your mother signed over as an informant, is a governmental work. You do not own that governmental work. You can do a DBA and you can do the whole thing, but if you do a DBA, make sure that their name is in all capital letters at the top. Make sure the hospital. Capital letters, lowercase letters, don't mean shit. It's your family name first, and then your first name last, and you got creator in parentheses on the side of it. And the top of it. Okay, right out the gate, the, the biggest problem with what he's saying is he's still checking in with the state. It's their documentation. So with their documentation, it's already written and scripted out. Um, I'll show you a job application is what I'm talking about. What you are is not written down there. You make you have to take a a check mark on the boxes that's dark, already there. You white, American, Indian, Native, whatever. Those are the choices that they give you. Black, white. I'm an American nationalist. This is who I am. And that choice is not there. So I need the job, though. So I'm going to say, fuck American nationalists. I need to work check. And then I get the job. And you it, you think that it don't cost you anything, but it does. You just said that you are what they tell you to be. So now you're paying taxes under the names that they qualify. I'm an American nationalist and I don't have to accept what they say on a on a job application. And I cannot I cannot be discriminated against because I won't accept their option. So your option is to scratch off what they said and sign in there what you are. Y'all understand that? If that makes sense to you, what he's saying, he's he's using their paperwork. So the titles that they give you, you got to squeeze into their frame. So you st it's like being on one of these platforms where I understand that I have every right. They'll say by using the platform, you agree to X, Y, Z, yada, yada, yada. And that's it. Everybody want to be on social media and you don't know that they telling you. Or they think that they construct in a way that they taking your rights from you by you being on the platform. I reserve every fucking right I have on the planet per God. And those laws and rules are bigger than IG, Facebook, YouTube, because they don't make the same swears and promises that I make. They'll take your free speech. I won't. Whether you like what I'm saying or not, whether I like what you're saying or not, on God, you got a right to say it. No man says you got to take my job and this is the way you have to take it. It's people, governing bodies, mayors, congressmen, councilmen, 
that supposed to have studied that constitution and know every right God gave you a place like YouTube, Facebook, IG can't take those rights. And they can't set up a contract where you don't have anything to do but go along with what they said. So when I come on here, I reserve all rights that God gave me. And if they take any of them away from me, then they liable. That's just like saying, I'm your slave. I got to wear what you want, speak how you want me to speak. And then you see now, while I'm saying the timing is great, the government is taking shit down that from little voices like me. You know, they, they think y'all dumbasses and y'all don't know the difference between whether I'm a quack or not. So outside of you getting to choose it, they take it down and you've seen it. And if there's no truth in what people are saying, then just let the shit rock. You know, if it's not if it's not true, then it won't come to fruition like liars. I, I don't want the liars to be hidden. I want y'all to keep saying what y'all saying. The COVID shit, it don't work. You've seen it, but if I say it don't work, YouTube is mad that I won't agree with them. So they make my voice their slave or not. I've been suspended, I don't know how many times. And they're talking about community guidelines. The only fucking community guidelines that count is the ones for humanity. YouTube, IG, Facebook, whatever platform, you're not bigger than us, the people. The problem is the people so hard up for using your fucking platform that they let you run amok. No, you're not the law. It just needs to be congressmen, councilmen. And now you're seeing that Donald Trump came and they don't get a chance to bitch. Now the Republican side acting like, oh, we, we such the Americans. You're not because the laws I talk about, they've been in effect. You haven't defended anybody, but now you're trying to take the chance to look like the superheroes. All of y'all is still fraudulent as long as you still exist in a way where people like, well, not myself anymore, honest Americans that work for their money, y'all changing words and things and not being honest with them. So you got people paying income taxes when America isn't about income taxes. America's tax situation at the most was for the corporations. And that was about profit and gain, not personal income taxes. I know the history of this country because it's my country. It's not a white country. It's not an Italian country, Irish. It's not any of that. God made it. You know, I don't have a receipt for any of it, but I do have the right to exist in the capacity that God created without you fucking with me, without you saying I can't do this. You created on a landmass that God made. So every right that God gave, we get. You don't get to say Unless it's your house, which I don't have any rights to come up in at any time. In your house, if y'all stalk raving homosexuals, that's your governing. Outside, you don't govern me saying I got to wear a mask and the rest of society wear a mask. All of y'all that's under this mask mandate that don't agree with it, you pay taxes. You understand? And they keeping you out of shit. They saying you're not a part of society because you won't do what we say. You should say, cool. That tax money that y'all are part of, take that back because that's a contract. You signed into it to get something. I'm not a part of it because I don't get anything from the United States government. And if y'all giving me anything, United States government, please prove it. You haven't given me the opportunity to work. You don't own the corporations, but Bob Johnson or Walter Johnson, whoever the, and I'm just throwing that name out there, whoever the CEO is at a Walmart, he a man with a business, but what he gets from the government, this one hand washes the other shit. They created a hierarchy and the elite list here that you and I keep going. And you need to explain, you need to tell your congressman, councilman to ask them to show you like your personal itemized where your dollars went. Because the taxes, they are seem to know if you made too much, right? So from what you made, and then what man qualifies how much another man can make, y'all? Like, that's not God's work. God is the, the chosen, the elect. Anything that comes is God, and God's elect is chosen by age. You, you, should, you should have been here long enough to have some kind of information for the next generation. He keeps charging the generations before. And how do I know that God's elect comes with age? Because in the story of these people that's called the Israelites, 
Who's the blessing passed down to you? The, the things of the father. The firstborn. Because he had more time with the dad to learn that knowledge. It's not to the second. It's done by hierarchy. It's done by, by not excuse me, I'm sorry. It's done by age. God's elect is by age. He's choosing the people that's been there before to know, look, I don't have a choice but to be an elder. Like I said, I've seen so much stuff and my mind's still sharp. I can recall it. That Tylenol situation. They recall that shit. Bring it back, boys. Any of y'all remember that Tylenol shit? It's been parents that said that vaccines killed their children. It's doctors. It's somebody, the New York Times, 49 years old, was, yeah, yeah, whoop, whoop, take the shot, and then died. Died like the next day. But YouTube or, or take down posts, Twitter, take down posts. If y'all so sure about the vaccination, then stand up. This country is about debate. This ain't some one way. If, if that was the case, people would still be slaves. Y'all understand how that is? My voice is here. I'm the public. Your government saying, oh, we want the public to be safe. I'm telling you, that shot not safe. I'm the public. I'm the same public that overcame the stomach cancer that I needed their chemo for. And for them to tell you that what I'm saying is not a fact, that's, that's fraudulent. That could cause some death. They liable for slander because I can prove it. I'm here right now with the cancer. All you get from them is what if, what if this, what if that? That's that's the sickening part of people that come in here. Like, I'm an actual person. Y'all trying to battle reality. You motherfuckers need to battle the, the, the falsehood, all that shit that y'all think. Don't come in here asking me, talking shit. Like, you, you talking about what you think. I've walked it out. This is nothing to talk about. And and again, this guy, he's on here with that sheet behind him. I'm outside with the police. You ain't got to listen to shit I'm saying. I can show you what I'm saying and showing it. And that shows me who you are. It ain't no debate for me. So I had to shut down the base. I see men just looking for ways out to not have to deal with what, what the actuality is. And that's fine, too, because I shut y'all down that way. There's no reason for me to have any back and forth conversations with any man on this planet. If you think you're beef with me, you're part of the situation to keep us slaves because of your ignorance, your atheism, your Muslimism, your Christianity, your Hebrewism, your Judaism. All y'all subscribe to these groups. Watering dead fucking plants. When any of those groups got you out of the agreement of Caesar? All of them fall under the roof of season. You think because it's a different a different floor in the same fucking building that you found the way. There's one way that's out of the building. Your delegates, councilmen, city council, mayor, uh, governor, lieutenant governor, all of them are in places so you're not taking advantage of. But none of them saying anything about pure law. One nation... Under God, right? Their God is money. It's on, it's on the slip. And that's fine that their God is money. What you can't do is let them say, hey, this is your God too. You know, it's no virtual signaling for me. I don't want y'all money. None of that shit. And most people think that not wanting their money mean that you don't work, you can't have income. That's a lie. They can't not pay you or not acknowledge you because... You don't want to buy one of their suitcases. Oh, if you don't buy our suitcase, then you're not in the game. You know, paying taxes is an offer. From being born to 18 years old, you're under the jurisdiction of your mom unless you move out. After that, you're not under the jurisdiction of anybody. Now, when you turn 18, what kind of debt that you create that you owe the government so every time you go out and work, you owe them? I'm trying to hit this point home at the at the purest sense of it. Like they have convinced you by being born that they know you or you're part of this society. I'm not. Obviously, I'm not a part of the society when I say I don't want to take the vaccination. I don't want to wear a mask. And they like, oh, fuck you. It's, it's for everybody. No, you, you're not in charge of me, per God. And if you discriminate against me because I don't want to take drugs or I don't want to wear a mask across my face. I'll sue you. I'll hold you. I'll hold you in account. And it don't matter how long it take. Like 
justice going to prevail. That's the hand of God. Everybody going to be served as. It might not come in a time that I like, but I'm going to stand in it. You know, um, I don't care how long it took for the stomach cancer to clear up. I was willing to stand and go to lymph with it. And I'm still going. So I don't take a lot of advice from people that I just got opinions. There's nothing for me to look at from anybody except a bunch of days and memories and shit that they have that don't suit them. We water and rubber plants. Nothing. Everything I said, I walked out. There's fruit in it. The word of God is above the word of man. And all I do is flash that. Because if anybody accused me of anything, you're going to have to stand on God. And I say a lot of stuff. It'll be somebody fat. That I was cool with. And I'd be like, you're a fat, nasty, out of shape, healthy, not healthy motherfucker. And I mean, I'm um, homeboys or somebody that's following me on IG. And I make a comment about fat people. If you get mad, I don't care. It's not a lie. I don't have to have you in mind emotionally. If you're fat, then you're fat. You should do something about it. Don't ask me not to say anything about it. That's YouTube. That's IG. That's Twitter taking down a true statement because somebody feelings got hurt behind it. But if you work out and get healthy, your life could be saved. Anything could change. You don't want that. It's the same thing with this fucking vaccination. You don't want to do a squat. You don't want to eat healthy. You want the quick fix. So now you become a slave to the government and you're going to virtually signal for me that no, fuck that. That's not for me. I live under God. You live under the state of Christianity. And it's not a man that's going to force my hand in that. You know, I don't know what else to say to any of y'all about that shit, but you're not going to force my hand. I, I don't believe in God. I know we have a creator. And none of us was made to be subjected anyway, financially, physically, emotionally. All of us have a right to exist. And for your government and for even y'all motherfuckers to agree with the government out of fear out of ignorance and above all, not serving God. I don't give a fuck about y'all. Death to y'all. If you not in good enough shape to withstand this disease coming your way, why is that? Why is your body weak and fucked up? That's your order. You didn't take a chance to strengthen that weak arm. Nobody's going to force you to be the best you. So when the shit come around, then you need to, to take it on the chin. The rest of us that's fit for this shit, you don't punish us. You know, the retarded kids in school, they was on a retarded floor. The rest of us kept right moving along. And we made fun of the retarded motherfuckers too. Shout out to you retards. You was retarded, should I not say it? But somebody got a retarded son, a retarded daughter. Now, I'm the bad guy, right? That's the fucking problem with society. Some stuff is not normal. You need to address it as such. Homosexuality, not normal. Y'all want to normalize it. You know, black, white, not normal. You have normalized it to the demise of the people that call themselves black. And these motherfuckers actually pump the fist in celebration of being black. And every time I challenge a black person, a black person, to what black is, they can't tell me. To what comes with black? What's the reward? Why are you so proud of it? When you've been to Africa and prove it. Nothing. And I say this to somebody black or anybody white. Now, now some cases white people because you, you good white people. Don't be good. Anybody that's talking about black people that's white right now, I respect you. Because you got to go through all the bullshit of... Dealing with whether you are racist or not to speak the absolute truth, right? Even when I speak it, I'll be like, black people rob, black people steal, black people have babies out of wedlock, all this shit. And that's not good enough for my mouth when I grew up in a black family, not household. Like, I'm an only child. I had nothing but cousins. And I knew how that shit went down. Y'all the same way, but you're going to need to make up excuses for your blackness, right? For me to say blacks rob, steal, kill, do all this shit, it's absolutely true. And the response from somebody black will be like, white people do that shit too. 
And that's not a response. That's called non-responsive in court. Y'all don't know laws, right? You said something smart out your mouth, but you didn't address what I said. So when I say black people rob, steal, kill, and all that shit more than anybody else, and you say white people do it too, you haven't addressed whether black people rob, kill, and steal. At a crazy fucking rate. You probably been robbed before by a black person, but your emotional part, you thinking that you just have a right to say something back. The truth can get lost in that. Y'all keep banging that shit with your black asses. You know what my kids know about being black? Nothing. You know what part of the culture that they love about being black the most? None of it. Which part of the blackness that Harriet Tubman talked the Marcus Douglas, Marcus Douglas, Marcus Garvey, uh, Frederick Douglas, combined the motherfuckers. What part of that talk serves my kids? None of it. None of it. None of it. None of the shit they did is significant. It means nothing. My kids know about John Brown. That was an American. He was a Caucasian American. But he rode against what y'all call slavery. That thing that all of y'all was a part of that none of y'all can prove. Well, John Brown and his sons gave their life trying to free black people. And it's not rumored. I don't know if it's rumored or not. But this John Brown wrote y'all Frederick Douglass a letter saying, bro, we get ready to get it on with these people. Come on down and help me out. To which Frederick Douglass turned his back on him. Basically, y'all Frederick Douglass. Y'all ever notice how all the intelligent blacks from back then left America and went over to Great Britain or England somewhere? Frederick, all these smart ass niggas, they left. They so smart, they don't know that this was the landmass that we was already from. I, I don't, I'm not giving these niggas a pass. All y'all so-called intelligent ass ancestor niggas, they didn't know fuck. What they knew was to try to be successful and the new world and then find a corner for themselves to be successful at. If you black in America, you, you don't even get it. Um, when they say that blacks own slaves, they got it. When they say, uh, black wall street, you think they identify with blacks or wealth? Plenty of stories about slaves getting left land by their masters that pretty much loved them, right? And they got left with those slaves, those people that worked that plantation. They didn't free them. Some people worked their way up to that point and owned slaves, and they look like us. You don't hear this because the part of white America that wanted to use that slavery against another part of America used the story. Another one of the ancestors broke that down, said it, said it very articulately, uh, Malcolm X, Another another one of my favorite people, Thomas Sowell, because through these ancestors, I have I have a narrative outside of the word of God. And it, it's tied right in to how the propaganda, how it's been propagated, how you never even tried to question it. Now, I cut through I cut through a concrete block with the driver's license. I presented that to people. Same thing with the taxes in real time. I'm not talking abracadabra. And all of y'all could do it for yourselves if you wanted to. And for the people that that come here to listen and get kind of a, um, a pull out of this day-to-day, -day, shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate y'all coming. And I'm not charging y'all like that, but it is some people that I'm charging. Charging to walk that shit out as hard as I walked it out. When you feel like you want to say something about or against the way that I'm presenting God, Know that the way that I'm presenting God, man can't do shit about it. You could be mad because I don't follow your religion or what the fuck you talking about on your channel and didn't do one thing to you. But you will come here talking shit about something you don't know anything about. You don't have any video proven this way or that way. And these are the things that allow me to talk with the confidence that I talk with now to say, yeah, I know the word of God differently from a lot of people. And I'll say something like, well, I'm the king of the word of God, right? Then people are coming, I'm the king, I'm the king, I'm the king. And, and then 
the the people will come and gather around and y'all are here the superficial back and forth. God said this verse, God said that verse, and we battle them with verses. But God didn't give us verses to battle with. He gave us verses to live by. So when you see me not paying taxes to a government that's against God, that has one nation under God, that's that's part of it. When you see me telling these police I haven't committed a crime, standing there in it, that's part of it. You know, video is there to support everything I'm talking about that I read. When you hear me read off my declaration of freedom and independence, telling the world I don't owe them shit, that's real. And I don't need to present that to a state. If the state roll up on me, I have my ID and who I am on God. And if they don't respect that, then they don't. But that show them to be who they are. Then they come and put me in a slavery that, that they don't have the right to do. I'm willing to go that far. It'll get exposed. You can't beat God. I don't give a fuck who you think you are. You won't beat God. You know, it'll be a death. It'll be something that go this way or that way that you won't subdue God. But the bully technique, the, the shadow casting, the them giving you these options that make you think those are the only options. They have you afraid to stand up in the word of God. I'm like, that's the only word. And that's what I bully the government with. You know, the word government sound intimidating until you figure it's a bunch of scared ass people that's working there. I see the mayor of Baltimore. I don't see anything tough about him. I guarantee you he couldn't sit in the room with me and deal with me. He's running the city of Baltimore. He a boy. He knows shit about law. What he know about is trying to achieve. He there for an agenda. But as far as me and you, he can't do shit. Any mayor, black, white, president, rabbi, they have no idea what righteousness is. They all sit in a position to get money. They won't govern per God. It's on the money in God we trust. You have a right to make a living in the land of God. No one can say because uh, you don't want to be a part of that tax, tax paying system that you can't work. That's straight up slavery, especially when they can't present what you get for paying that out. Now, when you give your money away, it's with investing in mind. If you're not getting a return on those taxes and more than what you invested, because giving you a portion of what's already yours, it's like the government taking 90, 100 percent of your life and then giving you 10 percent back at the end of the year. And you hey, I got my money back. All of it's your money. Write them a letter asking them. They have calculated how much they supposed to get from you based on what? They telling you that you got a lifestyle that you can't live above or you're going to pay them some of it. No matter how many hours you logged, whatever it is you did, that's not godly. And you can stand on it just as simple as I made it out. Y'all. So the state is not God. The state does not have authority over you. The authority of the state rests in you breaking the laws of God, you know, not breaking the policy of man. I don't give a fuck about the policies of men. They'll change. Look at y'all president. And 88% of black people voted for this motherfucker. Y'all know what that means? Y'all don't give a shit. You voted for some selfish shit. You voted for the minute. So you just assure for the next four years, your kids will be the victims of the same bullshit that's been going on since the 60s. <coughs> then in those four years... Your simple asses will do it again. And motherfuckers wondering why it's not changing. You vote for people that don't have any human being's best interest at heart. You greedy. They, <clears throat> they promise you something individually. And that's how you vote. That thing that you love in this minute. You selfish motherfuckers in this minute. How is that thing five, ten years from now, how's that thing that your lusting ass, your coveting ass want right now, how does it affect what my mother wanted at 17? How did it affect me? No dad, 17-year-old mom. Fucking white people fought we grew up in poverty because my mother saw the poverty, but never mind that. I'm going to fuck anyway and have a child. Are y'all ready for that kind of realness? If not, get the fuck out of here. This ain't the place for you. You're a good sheep. 
run along and be bad somewhere else. Don't we don't do that here. We bump heads. It ain't no sheep in here. It's all goat. Little goat, big goat, tall goat, short goat, but we goat nonetheless. Everybody can't hear, but somebody will butt your fucking toe. Butt your kneecap, motherfucker. I'm 6'2". I'll butt you in the fucking head. And if you taller than that, I'll jump up and butt your shit. Whether you Jew, Hebrew, Muslim, Christian, all that shit is garbage. And in and, and America, it's the land of God. And when you address me or deal with me, that's the aspect that it comes from. And a lot of y'all don't know that God don't deal with certain shit. So you ain't going to be able to have certain conversations with me. Don't wish me a happy birthday. Don't wish me a Merry Christmas. Happy Easter. None of that shit that came with Christianity. The creator made the day that we in. It's fine for you to wish me a good day today. I'll do the same for you. Don't come in here with your magical spells. Don't come in here thinking that you being nice. Like that guy, he, he think he's saying something and he's an agent. He may not be a willful agent, but he don't know enough to be talking about what he's talking about. So he's giving misinformation, leading you right back to the government and their paperwork. If it's something that that's important to you, you write it down. You write the contract and you sign it. They already have their contracts written up. And once you sign it, that's what it is. Unless, again, let me read this to y'all and I'm about to get up out of here. It is very important for you to claim your autonomy, per God. That doesn't separate you from anything but the government as your fathers and mothers. And if they saying by you wanting to keep the money that you made for working and not paying taxes that you are a criminal, are y'all fucking sick in your mind? Yes, do you even understand the weight of that? I work and if I don't pay don't don't get these letters fucked up. Y'all y'all believe that man wrote the Bible, right? Who the fuck do you think wrote some tax codes? And where is the book of morality with the IRS? They don't give a fuck. So it's your job to write these letters, y'all. I'm not asking for me. I already had mine. I'm not begging y'all for views. I don't give a fuck. The family that I have, I love. I love that they come in here and listen. Anybody that stumbled onto this shit, you feeling some kind of way, get your life together. Nigga, I don't even know you're dumbass. And they're giving free information that you can definitely use. This ain't my thing. This ain't motorcycle riding. This ain't basketball. This ain't gossip. This real shit. This is the word of the creator, God. But y'all don't know it, so you don't know it. And you don't know that I'm saying it. You down with all these policies, all these get-rich-quick schemes, and you scared to stand on the word of God. I'll tell y'all what that sound like. This is my affidavit of truth. This is me establishing who I am, not letting the world tell me that I'm anything. See what this says? Well, it's too much light. But anyway, it's my signatures the way I wanted to print it up. So if you're trying to free yourself from this system, why would you go to the system to ask for your freedom? Even if they pretended to give it to you, it would be in the way that they worded it, that you would still be a slave to their contract. Now listen, don't have to be just like this, but you have to make it clear who you are and what you are to the world. Sign that shit, get it notarized, and get the fuck on with it. Affidavit of truth, be it known to all courts, government, and other parties, I, Ever and am a natural born, free sovereign, without subjects. I'm neither subject to anyone, nor is anyone subject to me. I do not dominate, nor am I dominated. And my authority for this statement is given by the creator God, the same one that give y'all the same rights to make this. Same as it is for all free sovereigns, everywhere, the age old timeless and universal respect for the intrinsic rights, property and freedom and responsibilities of a sovereign individual. I'm not subject to the state by being called a person and any of these things that they created, such as black persons, citizens, 
All of these are still words that they came up with as policy. I don't answer to any of that. God didn't call me any of that. Does that make sense, y'all? It's not a magic trick. I just want to keep what I came to earth with to make sure that I'm not a part of anything that I didn't agree to. Does that make sense? I refuse to be treated as a federally or state created entity, which is only capable of exercising certain rights and privileges or immunities specifically granted by a federal or state government. I voluntarily choose to comply with the laws of God, which serve to bring harmony to society, but no such laws no, nor their and forces have authority over me. I'm not in any jurisdiction for I'm not a subject status consistent with the tradition of God given rights, unless I have harmed or violated someone of their property. I've committed no crime and I am therefore not subject to any penalty. I act in accordance with the following state United States Supreme Court case. The individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as given by God. He is entitled to carry on his private business in his own way, his power to contract is unlimited. He owes no such duty to submit his books and papers for an examination, for he receives nothing therefrom beyond the protection of his life and property as, as his rights as such existed by the laws of God. Antecedent to the organization of the state and can only be taken away from him by due process of the law. This way there's two or more witnesses coming against you saying, You've done something against another person that's a living, breathing person. You cannot go to court against an the organization. They don't stand to lose shit. And they stand to gain everything as a corporation and you as a person when you're the blood and they can't show one foul against them physically. How do you make a corporation bleed? How do you steal from a corporation if you gave them a down payment? No money changed their hands from you to them. All of this shit is made up in your mind. When you claim God, all of this go away because these are contracts. You should be, you shouldn't be a part of anything unless you get something on a return for it, right? People have driver's license because they get driving jobs and they get paid money to drive. And driver's license are legit if you're driving for a living. If you're just moving around like most of you is traveling. But your councilman, your congressman, your lord, all these people not honorable enough to bring law because all of them get something from you for this. It's different organizations that collect different ways from you not knowing you're not accountable. You don't have to be a part of these things. The biggest hustle is taxes. I tell everybody, please write the letter to, to the IRS. They won't respond. And then that's cool. You stop paying taxes. You know, and I tell y'all how to do that as well. If you get to that point, but not until you get to that point. There's been so many people wanting to be out the system as a magic trick, but don't want to keep the word of God. You can't get out of the system without the word of God. It's impossible. You going you gonna to break somewhere, something, something that you're going to be lusting after that's going to cause you to try. You can't do it. And you don't even have enough sense to know that more, more resources are come when you separate yourself from Caesar, you know, all the way, when you stop chasing what he said is beautiful, you stop chasing what he said, make you the man, make you the woman, then you gain it back. And when I look at people in Range Rovers, big houses and all that shit now, I get it. I understand why you sitting like that, right? And I'm not saying that everybody that, that had riches and shit like that, um, yeah, I am, I'm saying that. Because that's success. There's no way you can live like that and know what God said and just keep doing it excessively. It's foul. It's foul as fuck. And I like the way we live now. And I have everything. You know what I'm saying? I have everything. I can't think anything that I don't have. You know, it's the level of the society pushing. You got, you got brass, you need silver. You got silver, you need gold. They keep pushing that. And... At the beginning, it was just to have an accessory on your wrist or something like that. And society telling you, you don't have the newest one, so you ain't the man. And God, we trust. That's y'all God. Ah.
of the state. Uh, here we go. Among his rights are refusal to incriminate himself and the immunity of himself and his property from arrest or seizure, except under warrant of the law. He owes nothing to the public so long as he don't trespass on their rights. This is Hinkle versus Hale, 2001, U.S. 43 at 47, 1905. Thus be known to all that I reserve my God-given rights not to be compelled to perform under any contract. I did not enter into knowingly, knowingly. I perform, uh, not, excuse me, knowingly, voluntarily and intentionally. And furthermore, I do not accept the liability associated with the compelled and pretended benefit of any hidden one unrevealed contract or commercial agreement as such the hidden what unrevealed contracts that supposedly create obligations to perform for persons of subject status. Those are inapplicable to me and are null and void if I have participated in any of the supposed benefits associated with these hidden contracts. It was under duress and of lack of any practical alternative. And any such participation does not constitute acceptance because of the absence of full disclosure of any value to offer voluntary consent without misrepresentation or coercion, without a valid voluntary offer and acceptance knowingly entered into by both parties. There is no meeting of the minds and therefore it's not a valid contract. Any supposed contract is therefore void from the date of my age of consent to the data fixed below, I have never signed a contract knowingly, willingly, intelligently, voluntarily, and intentionally. I have my God-given rights as such. Take notice that I revoke, cancel, and make void from the beginning of my signature on any and all contract agreements form and any instrument which may be construed in any way to give away any, to give in any way to give any agency, department, at any government, any authority, venue, jurisdiction over me. Signed by me. And that's my that's my declaration. You know, I won't harm anybody per God. And if I do violate the words of God, which is murder, rape, robbery, then come get me, lock me up, I go to jail. What I owe you, I'll pay you. But what I won't let you do is make up things that's not consistent with the word of God, like a driver's license. That's for business. You would throw a man or woman in jail that haven't done anything to another man or woman because they don't know how to speak lawfully about a driver's license. And these are your congressmen. These are your councilmen. Mayor Brandon Scott in Baltimore City. Dog, you need to know law. Y'all, this is what's happening in society now. It's fake. Y'all don't give a shit about people. It's always an agenda. Plenty of people that don't want to take that shot. All media is pushing us. Take the shot. Take the shot. Take the shot. All media. Y'all honestly think all America is about that shot. I'm not. So since you don't agree with me, I don't have a right to say it, right? Some of y'all have kids, right? That don't agree with your dumb ass. What about them? Their future. A lot of you old fuckers are fucked up right now. Your bodies are tore up. You drugged out a million fucking kids and y'all are ones that's talking the loudest. Well, you got to take that vaccination to help society. You know, you got to eat better to help society. You got to fucking exercise to help society. The homosexuality got to drop to help society. You understand? You don't want to hear that because emotionally it don't sound right. But the law of God is what, what I'm talking about. So... Stop, stop praying to God. Stop asking God to stop killing you. It's the hands of God around your fucking neck. This is, this is what I have to say. It can't be nice. You know, because you can't identify it. Y'all think that it's not identifiable. When young people die, it's the hands of God. When old people die, it's the hands of God. When anybody die, it's the hands of that that created that. Like, why don't y'all... Just sit your dumb asses down on a bed one day. Put your heads in your hand and start thinking. What would that hurt if you just sat down and put some fire to anything that I just told you? 
and then see my videos where I'm walking this out. It's you. No white supremacy. Shout out to the Caucasian Americans. To which, without those Caucasian Americans, you motherfuckers would still be enslaved. You know, that's the hands of God, putting that thought on people's minds. Putting a, a righteous thought on people's minds. The same creator put that wicked thought to have your asses enslaved. This is Deuteronomy 28. Black people that believe in God, which is supposed to be all you fucking assholes. Y'all don't seem to understand that. Or you'll stop charging white people with the slavery that Allah put on your ass. And you hear a bunch of fake ass Muslims talking about it's the will of Allah. The will of Allah is for us to have it all. Don't that make sense? That a good creator would want good for us? But historically, I see what these motherfuckers didn't do, the will to create. I got to share for y'all again today, y'all. This song called Kimosh, the God who defeated Yahweh. Now, I'm using it because it supports some of the other stuff I'm talking about, how the Israelites had multiple gods. And it goes to the story of the creator, Moab and Ammon, without the religion. You get on these documentary channels and some of these guys be telling lies about the story, but they tell a lot of the truth. And if you based in the word of the creator, you know which morsel to pick the fuck out and let the rest of that shit go downstream. So I'm going to drop a little bit of information right now. We had a hour and 16 minutes in. Feeling good today, too, y'all. Hope y'all are okay. I'm going to shout the family out in a little bit. But let's go, y'all. This is on the YouTube channel, History and Mythology Explained. It's called Kimash, the God who defeated Yahweh. Now, Yahweh at L was the create just let y'all hear dr chu Kamosh, the primary god of the moabites was one of the most powerful gods who is very similar to yahweh but in what way why is he called the god who defeated yahweh well watch this video till the end to find out get your little get your little back about how the christianity and other religions got to the size that they were, it's always been in-house worshiping the other gods. Even the most powerful men of God, such as Solomon, etc., they all got outside the word of God at one point. This is why the word was so important. And what we do is we charge the creator with, with our shortcomings. Because David was an adulterer then the God of David didn't make sense because all these people in the Bible did all this bullshit. They charge it to our God, right? You fat motherfuckers. Kamosh was the most powerful God worshipped by the Moabites and by some Israelites. The specific characteristics of Kamosh are not clear in many respects. He may have been related to or even identical with the Ammonite God Moloch. However, the fact that Solomon had high places built for both Kamosh and Moloch at the same time and in nearly the same location indicates that these two deities were in some sense distinct from each other, as the national gods of Moab and Ammon, respectively, while Yahweh was the national god of Israel. The Moabites, Ammonites, and Israelites were reportedly kinsmen, and the Israelites sometimes worshipped Kamosh, as well as their own national god, Yahweh. One of the most popular characteristics of the Hebrew god Yahweh was that he blessed those who worshipped him and allowed them to be conquered by their enemies when they did not. Kamosh seems to have been sharing that same characteristic. Like Yahweh, he also blessed his people with military victory when they pleased him and allowed them to be conquered by their enemies when they did not. Kamosh was mentioned in the Bible as the abomination of Moab. King Solomon, the wisest man ever lived according to the Bible, built a high place for Kamosh outside of Jerusalem in honor of his Moabite wife. 666. Fact, Solomon had 1,000 wives. Well, actually, it's 700 wives and 300 concubines. The Wise King Solomon, right? Solomon has 700 wives. And that's what... what Solomon's myth is, Solomon's legend is, he has 700 wives. He was the fucking man, like, right? All right. So Deuteronomy 7, excuse me, Deuteronomy 17 is where I'm at. Um, 
Give me a second, y'all. Work with a brother. And this is for a reason. I'm going back to it. If you have, excuse me, Deuteronomy 17, I'm speaking about a king. And this, this is in reference to Solomon and all the wives that he had. If after you have entered the land that the Lord your God assigned to you and take possession of it and you settle and decide you will set a king over you as nations do, you shall be free to set a king over yourself, but one chosen by the Lord your God. Be sure to set over yourself one of your own people. You must not set a foreign over you, one who is not your kinsman. So your kinsman is keeping the word of God. That's the only thing to make these people kinsmen. The word. Moreover, he shall not keep many horses or send people back to Egypt to add horses. Since the Lord has warned you, you must not go back that way. And he shall not have many wives. Deuteronomy 17 and 17. And he shall not have many wives, lest his heart go astray, nor shall he amass silver and gold to excess. Solomon had all of that. Women, riches, this the word of God. So you know what I feel about Solomon? He can go fuck himself. Because the creator told him to go fuck himself. Did he say that? Did you see his words? No wives, no fucking gold and silver to, to, to excess. If he don't want a king to have that, what you think he wants your simple ass to have? Yo, what's up, king? Shout out, king. The creator spoke against kingdoms first and foremost. And if you're going to try to be a king, the kingship come on God's terms, not on yours. Fucking all these women having all this money. That makes sense. See, this is how I do it. I live right fucking now so I can make the jump from Solomon to right now. It ain't got to be no kingly fucking line either. The order of God is for kings, men, women, boy. The order of God, right? It's not you're not exempt because you black. You're not exempt because you Jew. What happened to the Jews? Burnt the fuck up, right? Did y'all keep the order of God? Probably not. Black people, what happened to y'all? Slavery. Fucked y'all up good. Did y'all keep the order of God? Judaism, the rabbinical Jews. Y'all kept Christianity, the origin of that. Um, I did my resources, my research on that as well, too. And I am the expert. And the simple reason that I'm the expert is because Mines is not for money. Mines is not for a bunch of other people that agree with me in another field. And we have this relationship to where I'm the DMV and you the insurance company. Then we it's, it's in our best interest to link up or I, you the dealer and I'm the insurance company. So we'll come up with a scam to get that money where both of us are lucrative. But your dumbass stand out there holding the bag. That's Judaism, Christianity. All these things are linked to the Roman Empire. Y'all yeah, know I let y'all hear that too, but we show and prove because I like doing stuff like that. You know, it's it give me the 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 stand on. Y'all know what I'm saying? Like the the just shit in this world face. Y'all understand how good it feel to just take a shit right on everything that they're talking about right now. And hold on, y'all. Going to Caesar's Messiah, one of my favorite channels now. Um, where my shit at? Beautiful to show and prove. Uh, how the rabbinical priesthood came. Then I'll jump back to, to, um, what I was just playing. But it's important for me to make the connection, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Very, very important. I believe this is it. Audiology, they do like, it's basically. Speaking about the Jews. Now, the Judaism I mentioned before. It's an amalgamation of people that ran into the tribe of Judah. And what I'm realizing, the more shit that I read, the amalgamation of which they practice the word of God. That's why I kept reiterating, don't add, don't subtract. I'm going to play this. It will talk about the rabbinicals, where they came from. And then I'll play the rest of that video. And it should shed, or share, shed some more light on what I'm actually talking about. So... Again, this is um, Caesar's Messiah, and the name of this is the Roman invention of Jesus Christ, the Flavian Thesis, and this is by Rod Blackhurst, another one of those people that researched this shit, you know, like myself. After the destruction of the temple, 
the Romans were in a position where they had to try to find people amongst the Jews who they could work with and who they could sponsor, presumably because they were white, uh, the Sadducees and uh, the Roman civil service. The oh, Roman shit, it's getting good, very y'all. Very deliberate policy. I'm sorry. And the people like that, who, independent of each other, were just looking at it in the cold light of day and stepping aside from 2,000 years of, of assumptions uh, that have been sort of built into us uh, by, uh, by the historical claims of Christianity. When you put all of that aside, you realise that the Christian religion emerges at exactly the same time as those processes of power. One of the really surprising things for me, too, was to realise the extent of Roman control mm -hmm. of propaganda and of literature. It was comprehensive. They, they imposed monolithic control of literature. It's not like in the modern period after the printing press and so forth where the authorities effectively lose control of mm -hmm. literature. Everyone can have a, a copy of the book in their hands and it's very so important to, to study, control literature like that. But in the ancient world, the Romans, when they clamped down on literature, they really did clamp down on literature. And the more you look at it, the more, the more you piece it together, the more you realise that uh, it was the consequence of deliberate policy and careful construction. I hear this. Some suspect that it was a very deliberate policy and that there were a team of people who were there to construct a mythology, to construct, to take, to take the, the force behind the Jewish messianism and uh, to reshape it into a force uh, that the Romans... Now, when, he, when he's saying the word Jew, um, as intelligent as he is, he don't get it because the biblical narrative, they, they, they miss the biblical narrative and they go with the scholarship narrative. I'm, I'm using both of them. I know exactly who he mean as the Jews. And the more he talked, he revealed it himself. But he's using words like Sadducees, Pharisees, and they use words like uh, Samaritans who are actually Israelites. They won't say that. But these people all practice the form of uh, what we're talking about, the word of God. You can see this and in, they're not in, Jews. in rabbinic Judaism too. The Romans are faced with all different types of Jews. Some of them they can work with and some of them they can't. Some of them uh, are uh, accommodationists, some of word. them are cooperative, and some of them are zealots in our terms, fanatics, that, uh, that they just can't deal with. And so the... What, what would be fanatical? I'm sorry, y'all. What would be fanatical about keeping the word of God? What's, what's fanatical about not adding, not subtracting? So again, these are those, those signals, or oh, you this, or you that, w without anybody having a conversation. It's just, now we're going to cast you as this and make you work your way out. It's like calling somebody a rapist have a policy of trying to suppress the zealots but also to take the ideology of the zealots and try to negate it through literature through propaganda the earlier romans hadn't quite understood this hadn't understood how bookish the jews were the, the flavians do and the flavians mobilize the roman civil service the roman propaganda machine if you like to create ideas and literature that can negate this virulent and dangerous ideology. Wisdom is to be desired Sorry, by the rubies. Add How bucks. do I know if I have actually valued wisdom go. above wealth? The only way I can know is if I paid a price. Come on, shit. The only way I can know is if Come I Come on, actually... asshole. <laughs> now, the Romans have destroyed uh, the Sadducees. And uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, we see another group who've been shed and who've uh, sort of disappeared from israelites the disappeared their books in caves and presumably they expected to come back and collect them at some time but uh they didn't they got wiped and out so the books were still there because they didn't come back and this when the jews them got them out. the pharisee movement which was always anti-temple which wasn't connected to the temple the pharisee movement after well, they after were bullshit the of the temple the Romans were in a position... Now, this is this is where the... 
the Samaritans come in. They said like they stayed the whole time. Everybody didn't get exiled out of um, Jerusalem. Only the nobles, right? And hey, Lord, look, we can go for it. I can play that too. And I got that tidbit of information from this channel called Sam um, Arnau. And he's rabbinical. Again, he's giving out truthful information, but he's changing names because most people just assume with Christianity like they do with the Judaism and they believe all this shit just because y'all haven't investigated it. And it's not in the, in the best interest of the public for them to tell you this, put it in school books. And like now, like I don't take the medicine for COVID. I haven't gotten sick from it. You know, that'll be medical misinformation though. I'm telling y'all the truth. Your society has enough power say since we don't like what this motherfucker is saying. We're going we gonna to say it's misinformation. Well, you're hearing information now, right? About legitimacy of these Jews. Had to try to find people amongst the Jews who they could work with and who they could sponsor. This becomes rabbinic Judaism. There were some Jews who, who said to the Romans, look, if you sponsor us, we will sit down and we will create a type of Judaism that you can live with, that you can deal with. It's basically uh, inward looking. It renounces claims to the Holy Land. Because they didn't have any. To a temple. We don't want a temple. We don't want to rise up. And the reason they didn't want a temple, to temple because... They're happy to be... Excuse me, y'all. The reason that they didn't want a temple because they was never a part of a temple. This is part of an exile group that's trying to go back into that land, right? So... Uh, yeah, Sam R. Now, the second temple. I'm going I'm to play that shit as well. All of this ties in the information that's, that keeps you enslaved. And it's basically ideas that you enslaved to. Good citizens of the Roman Empire, if you just uh, let us get on with our religion and leave us alone. And, uh, and the Romans were happy with that. They sponsored that type of... Uh, they very particularly responsive that type of Judaism. They gave them grants of land, they gave them money, they gave them scribes, they gave them assistance. And uh, so at the same time as wiping out the more dangerous forms of Judaism, Israelites. they actively sponsored the benign form of Judaism that became rabbinic Judaism. The rabbinic Judaism, sponsored by the Romans. Who are, what else? What else are the Romans notorious for? What did the Romans give us? Y'all remember that shit? So now when I say that we never been in a time like now, this is what I'm saying. You see the Romans control the literature. They do it today. It's called the media. And but now with the event of social media, I can be here saying this. Anybody else can be seeing, saying that. So what do they do then? They silence our voice on social media. How can they be that afraid of a guy with the minimum followers like what, I don't even have enough. I don't have a thousand followers. I'm not supposed to be able to go live on YouTube. I never get a lot of followers. Y'all ever think how the, the algorithms just know automatically who to make the man? And for somebody to only get nine views, how does COVID signatures pop up or check the COVID site out on a guy that got like one view? This algorithm hurting. You know, outside of taking me down and they still block the algorithms. That's some powerful shit. It used to frustrate me, but it just let me know who God is more. It's no way. As fucked up as I am, if I had half the views that some of y'all favorite channels had, it'd be a different world. Because it's just the word of God. It's not the word of anything else. It's not the word of you getting anything. I'm not here to say you're going to get the taxes shit. Y'all see it as money. It ain't never going to work out for you. It's about the freedom that the government don't have to say that shit. The money is, is a bonus. You standing on up on what's right, that should show you that money will come just from that alone. You know what I'm saying? So let me fix my hat a little bit, y'all. Try to get jiggy with it. Change my look for a second. Ah, there we go. Yeah, but your Christianity. Let's take a peek at that. This is really important for our culture to understand where Christianity came from. And this is direct evidence. You can actually walk this path 
and come to this conclusion. You can know that Christianity was an invention of the Romans. It was done to pacify their subjects. And this is important because it gives us a different way of understanding government, how government operates, the tools that government uses, the purpose that government has for the various propaganda apparatus. I think it's, it's just it's, it's, it's a requirement of alert citizens to know how the Gospels were written, why they were written, who produced them, what was the purpose and back of all this. This is good citizenry. Everyone should be involved in this. Everyone should be looking at this, reading it, and coming and, and recognizing that this was where the Gospels originated. The Gospels came from the Flavian imperial court. The Christianity. But the Roman pacifistic giving to Caesar what is Caesar Christian, that group would have been promoted. Which makes it perfect for the Roman Empire. It's a fascist empire. It's got a very simple message. Just believe this. You don't have to transform. And you have to go through the authorities. Through the bishops. Through the state. Through the state. Christianity is a state based religion it was given to you by the romans you just heard the premise of it why would it have changed you think man just gonna say i'm gonna give up all these tributes that you given to me your state government your mayor where's that money come from do you see the mayor punch a clock congressman punch a clock anybody nah the money come out your check when I ask, when I said, what do you get when you sign a contract to pay the mayor, to pay all these people, what do you get enslaved, them telling you what's best for you? Shit, you don't agree. I'm not paying taxes. Why? I get nothing in return. They can't even show me something that I get in return. And then you know what they had the balls to tell you, 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 and everybody else? You made too much money this year. Based on what? Man wrote the Bible. Who the fuck wrote the tax laws? If man wrote the Bible, you motherfuckers got a problem with don't murder, don't rob, don't steal, eat right. You don't have a problem with bitch. Give me your tax money. Y'all out your fucking mind. This is how weak man has become. And these niggas are coming here and I honestly think it's a challenge for what I'm saying. That's the sad part about it. You motherfuckers will look right at your children, paying taxes to the government, bitching about you don't have any money, but you ain't going at them. You won't write one fucking letter to say, look, man, why do I owe you anything? You can't do it. There's no way you're going to do it. You're afraid. Uh, the second coming. I'm, I'm on the page now, y'all. Um, what is it? Ta -da 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 -da. My man, um, Sam Arnow, Jewish prehistory, Israel and Judah forged in iron, the gods of Israel, Judaism for real, uh, first temple. Let's go to this, y'all. Limo! I'm going to the first temple. We gotta help people customize and That's ad bucks. Um, I'm gonna try to end it at two hours, y'all. We like a minute. And 38. Hey, uh, now that I've finished up my episodes on the Davidic period and First Temple Judaism, I thought it might be a good idea to address some of the mistakes I made and elaborate on certain things that didn't make it into the videos. But first, a few announcements. First of all, I want to thank everyone who has recently discovered this channel. Sorry, Sam. I can't, I can't listen to that bullshit. Um, how did Jewish Temple work? Which is it? Maybe this is it. Paired to universalist faiths like Christian, best exemplified by the fact that Judaism had just one temple in Jerusalem and that all Jews were expected to orient their religious practice around this single location. The main form of Jewish religious rite was the act of making sacrifices at the temple. During this sacrifice is not the word of the creator again, y'all. So I can't fuck with that. I'm sorry. Uh, Judaism is not the same. And I'm trying to get to the point where they got taken out, y'all where they uh, got removed because all of them did not get removed and just the nobles. And that's what I need to show. So well, what I mean by God's elect, God elects by age is the elders, right? They removed the elders and the people that, that knew the word. So after that, you left with what? You know what I'm saying? You left with babes, 
people that don't know anything, so they freestyle, and you don't have a, a concierge, so to speak, a big homie, or somebody that don't want a rule, somebody that know the rules, um, prophets, judges, and they were always close to people that was in power, and you were supposed to make these decisions based off the word of God and nothing else. So let me see, y'all. God's Israel, the book of the Lord. Let's see what this is. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. El is one thing, because it's literally the generic Hebrew word for God. But saying the Jewish name of God is a major taboo, to the point of a euphemism treadmill where very religious Jews won't even say the word God. Now, I'm not religious, and neither are most Jews around the world, but even secular Jews have their limits. Most still fast on Yom Kippur. I've known atheists who still keep kosher, and as long as I've lived, I've never been able to bring myself to say <laughs> Now back to history. After the fall of Israel, you'd think that the massive influx of refugees into Judah would spin the kingdom into crisis, but if anything, it had the opposite effect. For one, the Israelites spoke the same language and practiced the same religion, which made the process much easier. So he just so he said, Israel and Judea. Uh, this is the book of the Lord, the 1720 to 609. So he just told you that Israel and Judah are not the same thing. And Judah, Judea, is something completely different, y'all. But saying the Jewish name of God is a major taboo. Jewish the name of God. It's a euphemism treadmill where very religious Jews won't even say the word God. Now, I'm not religious, and neither are most Jews around the world, but even secular Jews have their limits. Most still fast on Yom Kippur. I've known atheists who still keep kosher, and as long as I've lived, I've never been able to bring myself to say, Hashem. Now back to history. After the fall of Israel, you'd think that the massive influx of refugees into Judah would spin the kingdom into crisis. But if anything, it had the opposite effect. For one, the Israelites spoke the same language and practiced the same religion, which made the process much easier. This is what ultimately led to the legend that Judah and Israel had once been united under the kings David and Solomon, and the subsequent origin myth that both nations were descended by blood from a single patriarch named Israel, aka Jacob. Furthermore, Judah needed the Israelites. Israel had always been the wealthier and more populous nation, so the influx of gold and labor was crucial to Judah's long-term goal of full independence from Assyria. Four years after the fall of Israel, 25-year-old Hezekiah ascended to the Jewish throne. Hezekiah was a big deal, even by royalty standards. He was born during the ministry of Isaiah. Hiskiyahu, Hezekiah, was the big deal. Um, Hezekiah, who's spoken about in Isaiah 7 and 14, he the child that, that, would, that would come. King Ahaz's son that everybody confused for the fake-ass Jesus Christ. And a lot of biblical scholars believe that he's the baby Emmanuel, who Isaiah predicts will bring Judah to greatness. That's a lot of hype to live up to. And Hezekiah didn't disappoint, because with all his fresh labor and capital, he became the builder king. The majority of Jewish architecture from the Davidic period can be dated to his reign. Jerusalem, until now a city that could be measured in square feet, was quadrupled in size, with huge defensive walls stretching across the valley of Siloam. By far the most impressive of Hezekiah's works today is the Siloam Tunnel, an underground aqueduct excavated through half a kilometer of solid rock in order to maintain the city's water supply during a siege. Right here, it's even more impressive you see it. So, uh, it's pretty impossible to walk through because it's the middle of January right now. It's pretty impressive until you find out that he wasn't the first this tunnel was an earlier irrigation system for the same city over a thousand years earlier still. I just want to take a step back and point out that the city of Rome is just being founded at this point. And even at the height of their power, they built their aqueducts above the ground. With all this, it's easy to understand the widespread confidence that Hezekiah would lead the Jews to final victory over Assyria. And it's easy to see why the effort failed. In 701 BCE, the Kushite rulers of Egypt renounced their vassalship to Assyria and declared independence, followed quickly by Edom, Philistia, Amman, the Phoenician states, and finally Judah. The Assyrian army had just put down a decades-long insurgency in Babylon, so it looked like the empire was on its last legs. But the Assyrian king Sennacherib managed to sweep all of Judah's neighbors back into submission in a matter of weeks, before setting his sights on Jerusalem. The Kushites tried to break the ensuing siege, but were stopped at Ekron. And while Sennacherib failed to breach the walls of Jerusalem, he only failed at Jerusalem, forcing Hezekiah to surrender by default. No one can know if Hezekiah and Sennacherib met, but I'm struck by how similar they were. Both were 39 years old at the time and best known as great builders who had won massive upset victories against each other, so it's tempting to imagine them as having a mutual respect for each other. 
Whether or not this is true, it's telling that Sennacherib not only gave Hezekiah full credit for beating him in battle, but let him stay on the throne and elevated Judah to the status of most favored nation. Isaiah, who by the way was still alive at this point, thus concluded his ministry by proclaiming that Hezekiah had indeed brought Judah back to greatness and that judgment was at hand. Despite winning most favored nation status, Judah's economy stagnated for several years until Hezekiah's death in 687 BCE. His son Manasseh attempted to remedy the bust by allowing the rural elite to rebuild the high places, mountaintop shrines to minor gods that Hezekiah had destroyed in accordance with the prophets. Considering the religion that Judaism became, it shouldn't surprise anyone that the prophets were really angry about this, but since it coincided with Judah's transformation into a net exporter of goods for the first time ever, it only emboldened Menasha to reverse more of his father's reforms, going as far as to execute many of his deputies and sacrifice live children to the bronze god Molech. And while that sounds like over-the-top revisionist propaganda, we know it's true because the Greeks and Romans wrote about the same thing happening in Carthage, where Moloch was also worshipped. Needless to say, it was a chaotic free-for-all when Menasha finally kicked the bucket in 643. His son Amon only reigned for two years before being assassinated by his own servants, probably on the order of the high priest Hilkiah. And you know it's bad when the priests of the Lord are ordering hits on the king, but boy did it ever get the job done. Hilkiah became regent over the eight-year-old King Josiah and steadily influenced him to reinstate many of Hezekiah's reforms. At just 18, Josiah published the earliest form of the Bible, comprising the books of Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and most of Kings. While most of what we now know as the Torah already existed as oral tradition, Deuteronomy revised that tradition into what we now know as Jewish law, including the concept of monolatry. Judaism didn't quite deny the existence of other gods yet, but it did prohibit the worship of them. Instead of worshipping at the high places, the 23 priestly families from the countryside would rotate weekly duties serving alongside the high priest in Jerusalem, enabling them to maintain their own power while strengthening Josiah's. With Judah looking ever more prosperous and godly, Josiah turned his attention outward. The Assyrian Empire rapidly began disintegrating as the ever-frustrating Babylon rose up again and founded its own empire in 626. This was good for Judah in the short term, but Josiah freaked out when Assyria allied with its former enemy Egypt to push the Babylonians back. This threat to the regional balance of power was so severe that Josiah led an army to meet the Egyptians, only to be slaughtered along with most of the Jewish army at Megiddo. Mm. This didn't work out too well for the Egyptians either. After failing to relieve the last remaining Assyrian garrison at Haran, Pharaoh Necho II watched firsthand as the Assyrian Empire disappeared forever and led a punitive expedition against Judah. He replaced the new king Jehoahaz with his brother Eliakim, who subsequently changed his name to Jehoiakim and became an Egyptian vassal. For a few years, the situation seemed to level off. But with Babylon now the regional hegemon, Egypt had exhausted itself, and things were going to get ugly. Hey, thanks for checking out my latest video. If you want to help the channel grow, you can always donate on my Patreon page or simply like, share, All right, God's of Israel, y'all. That's the next one up. This one didn't have in it what I wanted it to say. We was talking about who got carried in and out of uh, Israel. As much as we like to talk about the Jews as a singular people in the ancient world for their belief in one God, that wasn't initially the case. Judaism is the product of thousands of years of gradual evolution, and the version practiced in the early Davidic period would not only be unrecognizable to religious Jews today, but actively heretical. I mentioned in the last episode that the earliest mentions of the House of David depict a steady decline from an apex of power and prestige that has otherwise been lost to history. It's hard to make exact dates, but most of this decline seems to have taken place during the reign of King Jehoram in the mid 9th century BCE. Toward the end of his reign, around 842, Edom successfully fought for its independence from Judah. Very shortly after, perhaps even the same year, Philistine raiders killed King Jehoram and kidnapped most of his family, with the notable exception of his wife Atalia and his youngest son Ahaziah. A year after that, Israel invaded Judah and killed Ahaziah, leaving Atalia as queen regnant, at which point Moab successfully revolted. The Bible will tell you that this is because Atalia was an Israelite princess, and that's true. The Bible will also tell you that she was responsible for bringing the cult of Baal into Judah. This is a very convenient lie, because Jews at this point had been worshipping Baal just as long as everyone else in the region. At this time, the Israelites and the Jews practiced basically the same religion as the Phoenicians, with a handful of core gods that everyone would have known, and idiosyncratic local gods for each tribe or city-state, like Chemosh, the god of Moab who supposedly inspired their rebellion against Judah. 
This understanding of local gods is especially helpful to explaining the division between Israel and Judah. The most important god in the Israelite pantheon, or the Elohim, was El, or El Elyon, literally the highest god, to whom the Israelites were commanded to make animal and grain sacrifices on top of Mount Gerizim in the city of Samaria. This common belief in El Elyon is what kept the tribes of Israel united, and oh, ultimately yeah. what kept Judah out of the fold. Because as far as the Jews were concerned, the true identity of El Elyon was their local god, this might not seem like a big deal now, but each god had its own hereditary priesthood. So for Judah to have a separate clan dedicated to the worship of everyone else's most important god would always set the Jews apart as off-brand Israel. There it is. Off-brand Israelites. Judaism. Priesthood. So for Judah to have a separate clan dedicated to the worship of everyone else's most important god would always set the Jews apart as off-brand Israelites. This is why Israel invaded Judah in support of Italia. It's also why it was so easy for the Jewish high priest to simply assassinate her and replace her with her seven-year-old stepson. Hello. And it worked. For the better part of a century, Judah was able to stop the bleeding and restabilize. A lot of people who read the Bible for the first time as adults seem to take special notice of the fact that the high priests were usually either corrupt or incompetent. But their power structure kept Judah unified and stable. Compare that to Israel, where Menashe had to constantly compete for dominance with nine other tribes. And with that, now we can talk about Baal. In 760 BCE, Israel was struck by a massive magnitude 8 earthquake. Oh, yeah. And yeah, if the tribal balance of power was precarious before, things are about to get really messy. In the course of rebuilding the kingdom, a competition emerged between the cult of El and the cult of Baal. Baal was already on his way to becoming top god in the Phoenician city-states because he was the god of rain, which was is hugely important to the Mediterranean, <laughs> where rainfall only comes during half the year in one bad winter and topple entire nations. God, and rain, yo. The Arab Spring started. As the generic creator god, El wasn't seen as having an active role in the world, so he got more and more sidelined in Israelite society. He was still there and had his share of defenders, but increasingly, those defenders weren't priests. Two years before the earthquake, a common Jewish farmer named Amos left his home country to preach against the Israelite King Jeroboam II at his summer palace in Bethel, and in the process became the first historically verifiable Jewish prophet. It's hard to overstate how revolutionary Amos' views really were. Forget Baal, he said. El is the only god who matters because he's the one who made a contract with Israel. Israel literally means struggles with El. And Israel was breaking that contract through its immoral treatment of the poor. At this time, the Israelite religion was based solely on rituals and laws. The idea of proactive charity as an act of faith was totally alien, so the Israelites were really keen on Amos to leave. But then the earthquake happened, and instead Amos started getting followers. Some of them were from Israel, but most were Jews who moved north after the quake. And the most important of these was Isaiah. Or rather, first Isaiah, because only about half the work attributed to him in the Bible was written in his lifetime, and you should get used to that. Isaiah began his ministry about 20 years after Amos, by which time Judah had become a vassal of the resurgent Assyrian Empire, while yes. Israel remained in shambles. Isaiah is mostly popular with Christians because of his so-called apocalyptic prophecies, which seem to correlate with the life of Jesus. But Isaiah was reflecting his own time with the belief that, hey, Assyria might be dominant now, but if Judah becomes a just and fair kingdom, it'll become the great power of the region, and Israel can join in. Did I mention that Israel and Judah were enemies at this time? Judah, in fact, had just teamed up with Assyria to subdue Israel. Oh, Israel yeah. revolted two years later, only to have its government dissolved and a sizable chunk of its population forcibly removed by the Assyrians. This forcibly removed population is commonly known as the Ten Lost Tribes, which is weird on a few levels. For one, the Northern Kingdom had nine tribes, not ten. For two, only the Israelite elite were ever forced into exile. If you want weird on a few levels, for one, the Northern Kingdom had nine tribes, not ten. For two, only the Israelite elite were ever forced into exile. If you want to see What's important about the Israelite elite being forced into exile is it left no regular people. You know, like um, the Israelite elite would be, you know, your your congressmen, your councilmen, people that was running this shit, the officials. They took them. You know why they took them? Because that's where the laws and rules lie. That, and they replaced them, and the returning people came back rabbinical judaism that shit that they sponsored by the romans so that's it y'all for the day let me shout out the family thank y'all for sitting in shout out the nephew bro little brother brennan ogp shout out to you for sending me that message to make it part of the, the video today
Dr. Chu, King, Relly, my man Brian, Anil, Matthews, what's up, bro? Uh, to my sister Jackie, Jessica, Mariam, Laverne, Bree, all of y'all. I appreciate y'all coming through, man. And um share too. Like people that y'all I know it's people in y'all life that, that can hear y'all that's not in contact with me and trust y'all with what y'all saying. But um you don't even have to trust me, honestly. You just research it for yourself. It's there, y'all. If I missed anybody, hit me up in the comments. I shout you out. Shalom, Islam, Shalom Aleka, Alhamdulillah, Mashallah, God bless y'all, take care, have a, what's snowed out here in Baltimore, but still a day that the creator made, so enjoy that shit, y'all, peace.